Good Tuesday evening, everybody. Tuesday, July 20th, 2021. Jeremy Crosby, welcome back into the Tiaki Fitchberg studio. Get the chills when I'm here. Glad to be back in the studio today and glad to bring you another Talking Fitchburg show. We've got a great lineup for you here on uh, Talking Fitchburg today. We'll be taking you out to last night's concert, a packed concert at McKee last night. Hopefully you made it out there, but that's why we're here. If you can't make it, we'll bring you a little piece of it. We'll have that coming up for you here on uh, today's show. Plus, we'll talk a little bit about fire safety here in the summertime for the Fitchburg Fire Department. They'll be here helping us out with that. And, of course, your headlines as we work on this Tuesday. And uh, nice weather going on this week, too. We've got uh, good uh, weather here moving uh, forward which uh, also helps, I think, go through the week. Chance of storms for the rest of the week, but hotter too. So for those folks who uh, love it a little warm, you're going to get it, <laughs> at least uh, coming up here uh, this week. Uh, but uh, definitely check the weather before you head out for some of your night plans. All right, let's start with some headlines here. And we've got a public hearing on the council's proposed amendments for the 2022-2031 uh, capital improvement plan. This proposed uh, capital improvement plan uh, is going to be, uh, or the uh, amendments, and then ultimately the final uh, put together assembly of this will be happening on July 27th at 7:30 p.m. Common Council will hold that uh, public hearing at the Fitchburg City Hall and virtually uh, regarding uh, the council's proposed amendments, uh, capital improvement plan, or CIP as we call it here in house. It's access to Mayor's CIP. For in the proposed amendments, you can go to the website, pitchburgwi.gov, and look for the capital improvement plan right there on the main site. All right, Curry Court and Old Indian Trail Stormwater Study Public Information Meeting will be happening Thursday, July uh, 29th. Almost the 26th. Just looks like a 26th thing, right? No. Thursday, July 29th from 7 to 8 p.m. Uh, to discuss uh, study findings. The meeting will include a summary of the purpose of this study, a description of the alternatives that were assessed as part of the study, a discussion of the assessment methods, and overall study findings. Yeah, you can uh, uh, attend this uh, in person at City Hall, 5520 Lacey Road. If you'd like to publicly speak, you can uh, get on virtually as well to do so. And of course, you can always watch at Fact TV. We got you covered there on the F3, uh, the GUP channel. And uh, our en environmental engineer, Claudia Guy, She's available if you have any questions about this. All right, McKee Farms Park uh, Playground Survey. Uh, we're looking for feedback on this uh, playground. Uh, this park's uh, this part of the Parks Recreation Forestry Commission, in partnership with the Fitchburg Optimist Club, is working to install an inclusive playground adjacent to McKee Farms Park Splash Pad. To uh, the play equipment is anticipated to cover approximately 4,200 square feet, and will have uh, an accessible path connection to the parking lot and splash pad. Construction is anticipated to commence this fall, uh, or the fall of 2021. Uh, please find any additional information uh, regarding the survey uh, on the survey, and uh, again, you are going to vote on your preferred playground. So check out the survey; it's online. You know where to go. FitchburgWI.gov. I need, like, a button for that, so it just says it. FitchburgWI.gov. Andrew, work on that for me. All right, you got questions about the Delta variant? We've got answers. Not me, but our friends here do. Yeah, that's right. <coughs> Excuse me. Dade County Public Health. <laughs> Get all choked up on that. All three vaccines are effective against the Delta variant. If you are not vaccinated, you are at risk for catching covid <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, for people who are not or cannot be vaccinated yet, continue masking up indoor, uh, up in indoor spaces. And you can read more uh, about this on uh, the blog uh, at uh, the Dane County uh, or Madison Public Health of Madison and Dane County. You think I get the order right after talking about this all the time? But no, can't do that. Yeah, there is that information on there. So uh, it's important that you get uh, the full doses uh, to be protected. That's two doses of Pfizer and Moderna or the one dose of the Johnson & Johnson. And there's still plenty of pickup uh, or drop-in areas uh, to get those uh, vaccines. Just check out their website for more information. Of course, we'll share their story so you can learn more if you have questions about the variant of COVID-19. All right, finally, uh, we're talking about some stargazing. Ready to look up. Well, don't look up, I mean, yet, but you get this, right? Stargazing event uh, at, uh, is this the pre-side meteor shower? Is that how you say that, Andrew Bamlett? He says he thinks so. 
I'm going to go with that on that. Donald Park of Dane County. It's in the uh, Mount Horeb area, if you were wondering. But here it is. The Madison uh, Astronomical Society, along with friends of Donald County Park, invite you to Pops Knoll to view the night sky and the preset meteor showers. View the planets and stars through the telescopes provided by the Madison Astronomical Society or bring your own telescope. This is the night, the new moon. Uh, there is a new moon, so the viewing should be spectacular. Bring your family and friends. Roast some marshmallows around the uh, fire pits that are available. And uh, Donald County Park is uh, Pops Knowles is located at 1945 State Highway 92 in Mount Horeb. Sounds like a lot of fun. Take the family, do some stargazing, campfire. I love it. All right, let's take a quick break. Uh, coming up next, we're going to open up our uh, digest with the Fitchburg Fire Department summer safety tips. It's next right here on Talking Fitchburg. You could be spreading the coronavirus without realizing you have it. So follow guidance from authorities where you live and do your part. It's important to limit in-person interaction with anyone outside of your immediate household. But phone and video chat are safe ways to connect. It's also important to limit any social gathering. This advice applies to people of any age, including teens and younger adults. Visit coronavirus.gov for the latest information. After you joined our family, it was like, I really do feel complete now. Welcome back into Talking Fitch. We're joined today from the Fitchburg Fire Department. It is our educator, our friend, our family, Adam Dorn. Welcome back to the show. How are you doing? Thanks, Jeremy. I'm doing well. How about you? I am awesome. And I'm ready to talk about campfire safety and a little bit of grill safety. We talked a little bit about it uh, earlier in the month, but we wanted to make sure that uh, we kind of tie all these together because uh, it might go hand in hand. You might be grilling and might do a campfire grilling, then campfire, campfire, grill, whatever the combination, we want you to stay safe. Uh, and uh, first and foremost, uh, by no means are we encouraging anybody to have campfires. And uh, there are uh, rules in place uh, here in the city uh, for campfires. And that's probably where we should, we should start, Dorn. Uh, in general, uh, if somebody does want to do a campfire uh, in uh, the city of Fitchburg, um, how can they achieve that? That is an excellent question and an excellent place to start. So um, in the city of Fitchburg, the only areas that you are allowed to have an open fire uh, is outside of the urban service area. So as you'll see on the map, it's the area that is outside of where all the development is basically. Uh, in that area, you can have um, open fires. You do need to call the fire department to get a burn permit. Burn permits are free, but they are only good for the day that you are calling. So if you call today, you can get a burn, burn permit for today but you cannot get one for tomorrow. You have to call tomorrow. Um, inside of the urban service area where all the development is, there are no open fires or no campfires allowed, so to say, right? However, if we have a recreational fire pit, one that has a spark arrestor over the top, um, something that's somewhat enclosed like with a mesh, that is allowed, uh, but you still need to call for a burn permit. And it's more for the fact that we know where there's a fire in the neighborhood. So if we get a call for smoke in the neighborhood or the smell of a fire, we are at least aware that something is going on in the area. Um, there are numerous uh, rules that are set forth by NFPA that the city has adopted, um, such as if you're doing a recreational fire pit, you need to be about 25 feet away from anything that could, any structure or anything that could burn. Um, so that, kind of limits where people can do put these recreational fire pits. Uh, some Just something to be aware of. Um, all of those rules can actually be found on our um, city website. Uh, we'll make sure you guys get a copy of that too. And uh, so those are some of the real basic things about where, what you can do and where you can do it. Uh, the other thing to think about is that when you use a fire pit or you're burning stuff, you can only burn clean wood. So sticks from the yard that would be considered clean wood if you have cut off lumber from a construction project you could use that as long as it's not treated or dyed 
All right, Doran. Well, that's good information. No, glad we're uh, clarifying that, uh, that you uh, need that uh, to uh, have that fire. Turning our attention to uh, cleanup uh, and, and also going with, uh, if you're doing grilling with a charcoal, uh, a specific message that we, I want to make sure you repeat and, and, and the steps in doing so. Uh, whether you're having a fire or, or grilling, uh, disposal of things uh, can be tricky. Uh, so let's start on the grill side of things. If you're going to remove, uh, you're done with the charcoal uh, grilling, what uh, would be the next piece uh, that you would want to uh, do for disposal? First thing is let it cool. <laughs> let it cool down in your grill. Uh, you know, give, it, give it a few hours. You know, 6, 12 hours is always good. 24 is even better. Um, do that. And then after it's cooled down, you can take your charcoal, your ashes out of that, but then put it into another bucket with a lid. Uh, by doing that, you're going to give yourself some more time to make sure everything's completely cooled down before you dispose of it. Um, a lot of people that we've been to for fires have taken those coals or the ashes, put it into plastic bags and put them in their garbage bins. Um, that leads to fires because there's a lot of heat that is retained in those ashes or those coals for quite some time. That's why we recommend if you put it in the metal bucket, put a lid on it and leave it sit for 48 to 96 hours, then you should be able to, re to uh, dispose of it in the garbage if you want to. I've also seen and heard other people using those ashes and putting them in their gardens to give some more nutrients to the, their plants that they have. So a couple different options that, uh, that are out there. But either way, the big thing, make sure you let it cool down we don't want people to be burned by these ashes. And then uh, on the same front uh, for the portable campfire uh, recreational unit. So you're at the end of the night. A lot of people might just leave it, walk away like, well, it'll burn itself out. I, I've said it myself. I'm guilty of it 100%. Um, I live out in a very rural area. I have a campfire pit thing. And, uh, you know, I'm like, well, let's let it burn out. And uh, every time I've done that, I've ended up going back outside almost every time and putting water on it because it just drives me crazy to think if something were to happen and I just would feel devastated. So uh, what uh, would be the recommendation on that front? Yeah, absolutely. I, I've been there too, Jeremy. I've, I've done the, uh, we'll just let it burn out. Um, no, you're, you actually did the right thing. You should go back. You should stay there, keep an eye on it until it is out or put it out. You know, you take some water and get it, cool all the coals down so that there's no possibility that it could reignite and you know maybe you're, you have pets or kids go out right we don't want them to fall into it get close to it and get burned by putting it out before you leave that is the best way to handle that yeah, definitely uh, something you got to think about uh, when doing it. And then as far as if you are enjoying a campfire, uh, the distance around a campfire for, for kids, people, pet, you know, the whole thing, uh, uh, keeping it safe so you can avoid burns uh, or, uh, or, or worse, uh, uh, what would you have for recommendations? Yeah, uh, we, like to, we like to think about keeping at least three feet away from that that campfire, just like in the kitchen. We want people to be three feet away from any of the cooking devices in the kitchen. Same thing applies outside for the campfires or grills. Keep three feet away. It, it lessens the chance of you being burnt or anybody else. Um, you know, one of the things that, that always kind of comes up is like, well, what about, what about when we want to make s'mores and roasting marshmallows, right? Don't we have to be closer than three feet? Well, sometimes, sometimes you have to, but if you're going to roast marshmallows, Always remember, don't let young children do it by themselves. Help them. Be, they can be there helping you, but maybe you're the one that's holding the stick or the device that the marshmallow is on that you're browning it on. Um, there's a lot of different things that, that uh, could happen as in maybe if they have a metal skewer and they got marshmallows on the end of it and they get to be on fire and all of a sudden you don't want them on fire and then they start whipping them around and now you have flaming marshmallows flying through the air and the last thing you want is that flaming marshmallow to land on somebody or a pet and then burning them that would be absolutely awful um know, know how you're going to handle those situations before they take place um some of the other things to think about is that i know i've, I've got many friends that have uh, campfires as well and they like to participate in a couple adult beverages as they're around the campfire but make sure you also have people that are responsible to keep an eye on others so that you know not everybody's consuming those adult beverages because you know if somebody has too much have them move further away to keep them safe uh, we're, you're 
you're there to look out for each other, keep each other safe. All right. Uh, it is important. And I was going to comment too, that you can go, that you might have to go to a specialty camp store or outdoors place, but they do make um, pretty large uh, metal skewers things. That's what we have for our family. And we still don't let the hit, you know, we we're holding it long enough where you can kind of hold on with them. But then after they're done, we're like, all right, hand it back. Like, don't even take that chance because of the metal end uh, it still heats up. And it's it's amazing how hot uh, fires can get. Uh, and I don't need to tell you that by uh, any means. Uh, uh, finally, uh, just on uh, 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 quick grill, other grilling safety tips or, or cooking safety tips uh, related to fires uh, and keeping it safe, uh, whether it's the distance, keeping the, the grill clean, uh, any other suggestions uh, to have a uh, fun summer without fire? <laughs> yeah. Uh, never use gasoline or other flammable liquids, flammable combustible liquids to start a fire, whether it's in your grill or a campfire. Um, also, always have something that you can use to extinguish your fire if you need to, like a hose, bucket of water, shovel, sand, or dirt. Make sure that's there so that you can uh, put a fire out if you need to. And the, the probably the one thing we all remember from fire safety talks when we were kids, is that what to do if your clothes catch on fire, right? You wanna stop what you're doing, drop to the ground, cover your face with your hands and roll on the ground until the fire is out. Um, just continue to roll all the way over, but just like a log. Yell, scream if nobody else is around that you are, that you're hurt, you need help, whatever it might be. Um, if you are burned, cool it right away, cool it with some cool water and uh, call 911 to have, the, have us come out there and take care of you. All right, Adam, always appreciate all the great uh, tips that you have for us. And uh, thanks for taking the time. And uh, we'll uh, hope everybody uh, has uh, a safe and fun summer uh, when it comes to uh, outdoor uh, recreation. Uh, Dorn, we'll catch up with you real soon. Thank you for your time. Yep, thank you, Jeremy. Appreciate it. Uh, Adam Dorn, Fitchburg Fire Department. Check the website. A lot of great resources out there uh, for uh, anything related to fire safety. Take a quick break. More to come. You're watching Talking Fitchburg. See on page four that the projections need to be blood next Thursday. Seriously? Thursday? Can't do that. Uh uh. This is really inconvenient. I have yoga that day. I have no time for this. So. I can't do Thursday, but I can do Friday. Disasters don't plan ahead. You can. Talk to your loved ones about how you're going to be ready in an emergency. Don't wait. Communicate. If you love them enough to suck the snot out of their nose at 4 a.m., then surely you'll check NHTSA.gov slash the right seat to make sure they're in the right car seat. Welcome back into Talking Fitchburg in our guest segment. And if you didn't go out to concerts at McKee last night, don't worry, you missed everything. Just kidding. Kidding! No, we have coverage of it for you. Of course, we uh, capture all of these or tape them and rebroadcast them a little bit later in the summer, in case you missed it. But uh, until then, we have just a slight taste of what you missed last night on a beautiful night of great music. inside my car. I got pictures, got candy, I'm a love of man, and I'm a Satan, you're a star. I'm your people, baby. Take it anywhere you want to go. I'm your people, woman. By now I'm sure you know that I love you, I need you, I want you, got to have you, child. Thank God in heaven, you know I love you. I'm your Be a movie star. 
Baby, do the conga, no, you can't control yourself any longer. Come on, shake your body, baby, do the conga, no, you can't control yourself any longer.
getting stronger Don't you fight until you try to do the conga beat As I said, if you uh, missed this concert or the first one, we've been taping them, and we'll rebroadcast them here on uh, Fact TV. We'll get you the details on that a little bit later in the month. When we preview, oh, I guess I don't want to say it. can't say it. All right, we're going to take a quick break, wrap up the show next. You're watching Talking Fitchburg. The central and midwestern U.S. averages more than 850 tornadoes each year. And lately, the number of floods has been rising in the region, too. So chances are, there will be more twisters and floods near here again. And between school, sports, and social lives, chances are, you won't be with your kids when it happens. Will they know what to do? Ready.gov slash kids has all the educational tools and information to make the conversation easy. When the time comes, chances are, they'll feel prepared, not scared. So talk with your family today. Multiple studies have shown that marijuana can slow both driver reaction and response time, which can be really dangerous. He's here. He's here. Wait, wait, wait. What? I can't drive. But what? My. Oh. <laughs> Welcome back into Talking Fitchburg. Wrapping up the show for the day. I want to thank uh, our uh, Fact TV staff for going out last night on that uh, concert at McKee. And, uh, of course, you'll be able to watch uh, the full uh, concert a little bit later uh, in the month. And you can already see the first concert. Yeah, we got that for you uh, up there uh, at Fact TV, FitchburgWI.com. That's where you got to go. That's where all the action is at. It's also here. Here. I have to say it three times or it won't come up. That's how it works. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, not saying it. <laughs> it's a good reminder, Andrew. Uh, Facebook, YouTube, uh, and of course, uh, your streaming channels of choice. Don't forget Fire TV. Just got on there. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you back here tomorrow.